Stand up. Yes. Thank you, I'll stand up. Well, first of all, it's, uh, it's fantastic that so many of you have turned out tonight. Um, I guess you're doing it for the same reason we're doing it. It, it matters. The next few weeks and months are uh, the most important in our, in our adult lives. Um, what's at stake is um, nothing more than an idea of Britain. Um, is it open? Is it tolerant? Is it part of um, a European family of countries uh, forging a common destiny? Or is it going to go on the fool's errand of trying to chase a notion of global Britain to further the leadership ambitions of the Tory party, of Jacob Rees-Mogg and Boris Johnson? Uh, one will have to finally lead. Um, what I want to say in my 10 minutes, and I'll try to keep it to 10 minutes, so I, and really, you know, tweak me because I can bore for Britain. Oh, uh, you can't hear me. Um, is that better? Okay. Um, look, um, some of you may have come across the book I wrote with uh, Andrew Adonis called Saving Britain. Who has seen it? Perfect. Okay. Well, I'll just, uh, those who haven't, you've got to buy a copy. Um, every, uh, and tell your friends to buy it. Every, uh, every penny of profit we make, we are going to try and cornerstone an initiative to um, send disadvantaged uh, young men and women to spend a period of time working or studying in Europe. That's the plan with the book. Um, what we're saying, we open the book with, um, and it's important, I think, for winning the people's vote. We open the book with a statement, uh, Brexit voting Britain was right. The status quo is insupportable, but the solution is not to leave the European Union. Our problems, our economic and social problems were minted at home. They must be solved at home. And the best way of doing that is within the European Union. And to win the referendum, the, the message has to be remain and reform. We can make the case for remain uh, positively and passionately. And we must learn to use language as passionately and as well as levers. We will argue that the European Union is a noble 21st century cause. It is the architecture that permits Europe, the continent of which we are part and whose values we share, to be peaceful and prosperous. We are not going to be the instruments of Russian, Chinese and American foreign policy by breaking up the European Union and endangering the Western system. Uh, that's the first thing we say. And we say it because we mean it. We say it because we share the values of fellow Europeans. We say it because at this moment in time, Europe needs us as much as we need them. We need, as a continent, to confront the forces uh, of the populist right everywhere. Vox in Spain, Alternative for Deutschland in Germany, Salvatini's people in Italy. These are dangerous, dangerous forces abroad. We must stand together the best in Europe, not actually disintegrate it. That's the first thing we've got to say. The second thing we have to say, and I think we can, we, uh, we are, I think it's worth saying that actually Europe, uh, in a world of Donald Trump, uh, in a world of President Xi, in a world of uh, Mr. Putin and Mr. Modi, and actually the new president of um, Brazil, uh, Europe anchors the world system. There are 27 countries in the European Union if we leave. It has trade agreements with 30, another 31 in progress. That's 88 countries. That's more than half the membership of the World Trade Organization. The World Trade Organization, the WTO, uh, President Trump has said he's not going to nominate at the end of this time next year, 2019, December 2019, the American judge that constitutes the three-judge adjudication panel, which is the flywheel the kind of gear 
uh, of the um, World Trade System, World Trade Organization. Without that, the WTO can't function. And Trump's plan is to ensure the WTO can't function. Already, it's gridlocked. Already, it can't. It doesn't have any jurisdiction on non-tariff barriers to trade. Four times more costly than tariffs. Um, already, it can't even agree that the Doha round is over. It's a broken reed. Um, the world WTO rules means trade wars. It's the EU um, that actually anchors the world trading system that keeps goods and services flowing. It's the, w, it's, the, it's the EU that anchors our initiatives against climate change. It is the EU that actually on all these fronts is the force for good in the contemporary world. We want to be part of it. We want to um, co-lead it. Between 2009 and 2016, 90% of the regulations that became the world standard, the world standard that set the rules, even for the United States on areas like data, were written by the European Commission and behind the European Commission stood us. 90% of them came out of the UK. We had become the global standard setter. That is why companies like Vodafone rose to the preeminence that they have done. And uh, the data regulation, the GDPR, that came out of the UK. We, we uh, agreed, it, agreed it with Germany and France. Uh, the European Commission bought it. It became EU law. It is now the world standard for data privacy. To abandon that, to chase the fool's errand of global Britain 2.0, uh, is such an act of self-harm that it baffles me every time I hear John Redwood kind of saying it like a bot uh, on question time, repeating WTO rules as a mantra without recognising that we were the rule maker. How can Lord Mervyn King in the House of Lords accuse us of becoming a vassal state if we um, adopt May's rules, which by the way, we would, uh, without recognising that where we were before, the EU that he so detests had permitted us to become the global rule maker. To abandon the European Union at this moment in time is, is mad, mad, mad. But why did so many of our fellow citizens vote against the European Union? Were they voting for John Redwood's uh, ambitions, for Jacob Rees-Mogg's ideas, I don't believe a moment they did. Just consider the following numbers. Seven out of the 10 poorest regions in Northern Europe are in England. Their per capita incomes are as low as in Mississippi and parts of Romania and Bulgaria. A hundred of the local authority districts uh, which had no or falling house prices in the run-up to 2016, 94 of them voted for Brexit. Alan Milburn's Social Mobility Commission, uh, from which he resigned 12 months ago and has not yet been replaced, identified 30 social mobility cold spots, areas where primary school education, secondary education, uh, vocational training, were close to non-existent or extremely poor, and your chances of moving out of that um, kind of area were close to nil. Every social mobility cold spot voted for Brexit. Blackpool, a 67% vote for Brexit. <coughs> 331 adults out of every thousand, 331 adults out of every thousand are antidepressants. Local GPs in Blackpool identify um, why they prescribe them. They say the citizens of Blackpool are experiencing shit life syndrome. <laughs> Impossible housing, uh, insecure transient work, <coughs> wages well below the national average, um, education really, really, really poor. Uh, if you feel depressed in Blackpool, objectively there are good reasons to feel depressed. 
Uh, Mansfield, a social mobility girl spot, 71% of its citizens voted for Brexit. It's 12 miles away from Nottingham. 1% of the jobs in Mansfield are in the so-called knowledge economy. It's an old mining town struggling to get back on its feet. But 12 miles from Nottingham, how many people move between Mansfield and Mottingham on a daily basis using public transport? Highly expensive, almost none. Mansfield is an urban island, declining, fearful, marginalised, neglected, futureless, fearful about what globalisation and automation will do for it. And you know what they did on, July the, on June the 23rd, 2016? They gave people like us a wake-up call. If you don't care about uh, places like us, um, we are going to give you a kick and we're going to give you a hard kick. And they gave us a hard kick. We cannot possibly win this referendum, which I believe will happen um, in late May or June of next year. I hope later can tell us how that's going to happen. Um, <laughs> but we can't win it if we just make a bold case um, for going back into the European Union um, as if we learned nothing from the last three years. We have learned something. We hear the pain and the sense of left behindness of large parts of our country. We are not going to allow the Grimsby's, the Kettering's, the Weymouth's, the Stoke-on-Trent's, the Birkenhead's, the Wigan's to kind of uh, carry on as they have got, been allowed to carry on. We are going to reorganise uh, the structures of British capitalism. We're going to reorganise the basic social contract. One of the correlations that most horrifies me was that the growth of DIY dental kits, where you self-administer the anaesthetic and then apply the filling, that the growth of DIY dental kits uh, closely, almost cl closely, almost complete correlation um, with the Brexit vote. Here in Oxford, I had my biggest argument with uh, uh, a most ferocious argument uh, with three Brexit voters um, in Hollywood Lane. And I bought my morning newspapers after my morning run. And they said they were going to vote for Brexit to get a national dental system. There was no uh, national dentistry system they could sign on to in Oxford. Uh, apart from being stunned that that was the reason why they were going to vote for Brexit, uh, I kind of never kind of left me. When I saw these numbers, I began to see kind of why people like that thought the way they did. We have to have a reply to that. When we go into this vote in, uh, as I say, in the middle of next year, if we haven't got a response to the, these things by actually talking about um, reviving our social contract and above all, taking back control by rewriting the rules of the British Constitution. Too many towns, these small towns, cannot bootstrap themselves up into anything better because they don't have the power to tax locally, to plan locally, to borrow locally, to spend locally. The amount of discretion you have in these um, social mobility cold spots to do something is less than any comparable civic community in Europe or in North America. It is all control from Westminster and Whitehall. The taking back control message should have been about a new constitutional settlement, uh, long word actually for canvassing in Stoke on Trent, but nonetheless, a new constitutional settlement to give, to re-empower these communities. And so what has to happen is that the political parties that come together to fight the cross-party fight this is going to have to constitute have to sign up to remain and reform. And one of the things that we have to do campaigning for the people's vote is to make sure that the, uh, the, the constituent elements of that coalition all sign up and that can actually speak from the heart about not only staying in the European Union but actually reforming and remaking our country. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much.